Hello, Pastor Emily Ruiz here, and I would like to welcome you to our church. Whether this is your first time joining us or you've been part of the family for a long time, it is people like you and me that make up Family Life Church. And being part of our family means that neither time nor distance separates us. You can join us right where you are for this time of worship and encouragement. Please stay with us to the very end to hear all of our online announcements. May God's peace and blessings be upon you today and every day. Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built. Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide its face, I rest on His unchanging.
team because they don't just um, have talent and abilities and they don't just practice and try to bring you good music, but they pray and they cry out to God and they fast and they seek the Lord and, and they cry out for you and they cry out for uh, the ability to minister and the ability to, to, to pour forth worship to God that is honorable and pleasing to Him. And so when you when you come into these moments, there's there's things that have been prayed over. When we sing a song about breakthrough and victory, we're believing God for breakthrough and victory. We're not just singing a good song. I like the song. I like the style. But we're believing God to show up. <laughs> oh, man. I, the other day, I, I went out to the water and I began to pray. And uh, I'm out there. And you know how it is in southeast Georgia this time of year. I'm out there five minutes and boom, the, the uh, skies just opened up and I got soaked. You know, and then it was over like five minutes later. You know how it is. <laughs> and so I'm standing out there and, and I'm, I'm praying and I'm believing God for audacious things. And, and, I, and I said to myself, oh, the sign of the promise to Noah was a rainbow. I bet with the sun out and the rain falling, there will be a rainbow today. And I began to walk by the water and I began to look and I began to pray and there was no rainbow. And I looked and I looked and I looked and there was no rainbow. And I said, God, where's the rainbow? You know, and the sun's out, the, the water fell, where's the rainbow? And for just a brief moment, I said to myself, if the rainbow doesn't show up, does that mean there's no promise? And it was the silliest thing to say. It was just a rainbow. It was just a, a nature thing, but it was a God thing. And I, I, I said to myself, if the rainbow doesn't show up, is there no promise? And then I remembered something. Noah and all the animals were on the boat for many, many days and rains fell and storms came and waves crashed and a lot happened before that rainbow showed up. But there was a point where the rainbow was placed into the sky by God to remind us of His promise. And this morning I'm on the way to church and I'm driving and I said, I'm going to drive a different way today. And I drove back by the water that I had prayed at the other day. And I was coming up Blythe Island a different way. And I looked up and there was the rainbow over the water that I had prayed at days before. And I said to myself, just because it looks like the promise has been delayed does not mean the promise is not coming. And I said, just because I didn't see it the day I prayed doesn't mean that the promise is not on the way. Doesn't mean that in God's eyes the promise is fulfilled. The promise is a done deal. And I was reminded of Daniel when he began to fast and pray. It was 21 days before he got an answer. But God said to him, from the moment you started praying, we began to move. From the moment you started praying, angels began to carry out my will. From the moment you started praying, things began to move. And I wonder if somebody out there today is sitting in your car or standing in the parking lot and you're saying, I've been praying and nothing has happened. I've been praying and I haven't seen the promise yet. But don't you know that God was moving for you the moment you opened your mouth and humbled yourself before Him? And don't you you know that the promise that he gave you it may not have showed up yesterday it might not even be here today but he's handling that stuff and at some point you're going to look and you're going to see the rainbow of God's promise you're going to see that God has in fact always been moving for you that he has in fact always been there for you and that he has in fact fulfilled everything that you have cried out in humility to him for do not give up today just because your promise looks like it may have been delayed a day or two or a week or a month or a year does not mean it's not on its way. Does not mean it's not coming. Does not mean that you will not take hold of it and see it. I'm so encouraged this morning. I want to pray for us. God, in Jesus' name, be with my brothers and sisters right now. God, every leader. Every person serving, every person handing out water, every person passing out donuts, every person directing traffic, every person parking cars, every person crying out in prayer, every person sitting in their vehicles, every person that has come to this place today to hear your voice, to hear your words, to worship you. God, we're a church. Whether we're inside the building, whether we're out in the parking lot, whether we're down the street somewhere else, whatever, we're a church. We're a church. We're not bound up in some building, God. We're wrapped up in you and your love and your purpose. 
And we will see it fulfilled. We will see the miracles of God. We will see the promises of God. We will see things we have cried out for and fasted and prayed for. We will see. We will stand at the end of this year looking back on a year full of miracles. Not a couple of miracles. Full of miracles. Not a couple of things, but many things. Not a couple of things, but overwhelming victory and breakthrough every single day, every single month, every single week. We will celebrate it. We will see it. We will talk about it. And you, God alone, will get the glory for it. You're the name that is to be promoted. You're the great name that is to be celebrated. You're the one that we will say, look at what our God has done. There is no one like Him. God, I pray that you be with us today as we dive into the life of Joseph. I pray, God, that you would show us something that we've never seen before. You would cause us to hear something that we've never heard before. You would cause us to respond to you in a way that we've never responded before. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I say to dead dreams and dying dreams, live again. I say to dead dreams and dying dreams and forgotten dreams and dreams that were no more, I say live again and be fulfilled. I say live again and be fulfilled. Live again and be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, stir our hearts even before we get into your word that we will dream the things that you planted in us long ago and we will see them come to pass this year for your name, for your glory, for your purpose. God, that we decrease but you increase. That we serve but you get the glory. Always, God. It's not about us. It never has been. It is about you, Lord. We love you and we praise you. This day is yours. Have your way. And I pray that even as we talk today, that you would move through this parking lot and bring healing and peace and comfort and joy and provision to every one of my brothers and sisters here today and everyone driving by and everyone that's going to watch online. And we love you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody that loves God, said amen. 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 Can we clap? I know you're in the cars out there, but can we clap and give God some praise, huh? It'll be all right. <laughs> Oh man, you know, when we get back in the building, we may have to do some of that horn stuff or I'm not going to feel at home anymore, you know what I mean? We might have to blow horns in the, in the sanctuary when we get there. But I want to dive into some stuff today, and we are, I kind of gave it away during prayer, we are talking about Joseph just a little bit today, and I want to dive into some stuff that I think is very relevant for our time, and I think it's something that will be a blessing to you, and so I want you to take hold of it. But when my dad was a very young boy, uh, he spent a lot of time on a farm. My grandfather had a farm. My great-grandfather had a farm. It was just the way that they lived. And uh, he spent a lot of time out there. And one day when my dad's grandfather, my great-grandpa, he called him Pop. When Pop was in his 80s, he pulled my dad aside as a young boy and he said, Son, I want to share some things with you about life. I want to share some things with you. I want to give you some wisdom. I want to give you some things to see and understand about life. And he began to tell him about substance abuse and keeping your life clean. He began to talk to him about values and principles. And he dropped in his heart dreams for life. He dropped in my dad's heart dreams for life. Purpose and destiny and moral principles to live by and all of these things. And the interesting thing about this one conversation with my father as a young boy is that his grandfather imparted to him things that my dad carried with him all the days of his life. My dad passed that wisdom on to me and to my brother and to my sister. And very young, we would hear the stories of his grandpa and the things, the wisdom that he had shared with him that day when he pulled him aside on the farm. And we began to learn moral principles of our life from the wisdom of this man. And those principles, I got to thinking about it this week and praying about it, they even influence my family today, they influence the way that I teach. I have four boys. They influence the way that I lead in my home, that I teach my four boys about life as they become men. You see, my dad never let go of the dream, the principles, the moral values. He never let go of the dream that his grandfather put in his heart that day, all those years ago. And long after both men have now died, the dream still lives in my heart and it's been passed on to my boys. And they are living out some of the very things that my dad and his granddad and who knows how far before him had dreamed about. 
And some of you looking around this morning as I prayed and as I prepared for this, I began to believe that you're looking around at circumstances and you're looking around at life and you're looking around at situations. And if you're very honest with yourself and if you're very honest with God, I believe that you have let go of a God-sized dream in your heart. I believe at one time there was something in your heart that caused your heart to burn, that caused your, your mind to imagine the possibilities. It caused you to believe for something bigger than yourself. And I believe that some of us this morning have looked at circumstances, looked at situations, looked at this year, looked at what we've walked through, and have let go of a God-sized dream this morning. And I want to talk about that for just a minute today. I believe that you've decided that the obstacles in front of you are too great to overcome, so at this point you're getting by instead of thriving and flourishing. Instead of thriving and flourishing in your life, instead of thriving and flourishing in the purpose of God, you're, you're kind of getting by. And I get that some of the year has been like that, and we've had to adjust, and we've had to get by a little bit as we jump back into some things. I get that, that some of that's a part of this year. But I believe with all my heart that God desires for us to step up and thrive. I believe with all my heart that He has a dream for us that is bigger than ourselves. I believe with all my heart that He desires that we thrive and flourish. That we see the greatness of God in our everyday lives. That we don't just talk about it on Sunday. And we don't just tell stories about years past. But God intends to do the great things of God today. This moment. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of rescue. Today is the day of miracle. Today Today is the day of purpose. Today is the day that a dead dream lives again. Today is that day. I believe that with my whole heart. God designed us to live in this way. He says in His Word that we are more than conquerors. We've talked about that before. That we are more than overcomers. We are more than winners in Jesus Christ who loved us, who gave Himself for us. The Bible says that. And thinking about dreams and thinking about obstacles, I couldn't help but go back to the story of Joseph. Because in Genesis 37 and 5, we see that Joseph had a God-sized dream. But it was so big that he was made fun of and ridiculed by his brothers. The Bible even says after he told them a couple of his dreams, they hated him. They hated him. You guys know the story. They hated him for his dreams. They hated him for what his dreams implied. But God had sent the dream. God had given Joseph the dream. And it was a God-sized dream. It was bigger than Joseph. It was something that was impossible for Joseph to fulfill by himself. But God intended to make it possible. Time passes on. You guys know the story. Joseph's life takes a turn. He's sold into slavery. Then he's falsely accused. Then he's thrown into prison. But even the dreams of God find him there. They even find him in the prison. They even find him in the darkness of the dungeon. They find him there too. Joseph interprets a couple dreams for a couple of guys in prison. God moves. The interpretation happens just as Joseph said it would. You guys know the story. But Joseph is forgotten in prison once again. But God is still moving. Genesis chapter 40 is where you find that part of the story. But then in Genesis 41, Pharaoh himself has a dream also from God. In fact, he has a couple of dreams also from God and we find out that they mean the same thing. And Joseph is remembered in prison. He's sent for, you guys know the story, before long Joseph has interpreted the dream for Pharaoh himself and God has promoted Joseph to second in command of all of Egypt. It's an incredible thing. You've heard the story perhaps many times. And it's during this season of Joseph's life that the dream from God that he shared with his brothers all those years ago, the dream they hated him for, it's that dream that comes to pass during this point in Joseph's life. His brothers travel up to Egypt. They don't know he's there. They bow before him, fulfilling the dream of God from all the years before. They don't even recognize him, the Bible says, but he knows who they are. And he watches as God fulfills his dream right there on that day. If I could, I want to invite the band back for us this morning. As I wrap up, I want to show you some things about our God-sized dreams today. You see, God, as you know, had sent Joseph ahead through hardship and trial to save a nation. There was a purpose that was far bigger than Joseph. And quite frankly, had all of this not been set up, 
the people of Israel would not have been able to come out of Egypt and out of slavery many, many years after that. The Bible says it was some 400 plus years they were enslaved, but they wouldn't have been able to come out of that victoriously under the leadership of Moses had God not moved in this way in this time. So I want you to remember that as you start to pray about your God-sized dreams again. Because not only does your dream affect you, it affects generations to come until the Lord returns. It affects communities all around the world. You may say, well, I gave up on the dream God gave me when I was a teenager. But what if that dream means something to a thousand people? Are you willing to give it up and, and let those thousand people just go do their own thing? What if your dream makes an impact around the world? What if your dream does something far bigger than you ever thought possible? I want to breathe life back into your God-sized dreams this morning. Because even Egypt benefited from the miracle of God, the God-sized dream in Joseph's heart. It was designed to save God's people, but it also set Egypt up to eventually enslave God's people so that God could deliver His people through Moses. Do you see how interconnected all of these things are? And your dreams from God are no different. They are just as big, just as audacious, just as mighty, just as capable of changing the whole world. Just as capable of changing history. I talked to a minister the other day, and he, he looked at me and he said, what if you were poised at the place you are right now for this moment in history? What if we start thinking that way? What if we stop thinking, okay, I'm going to my job and I'm taking care of my family and that's it. What if we look around and we say we were placed here for this point in history and there is something far bigger that God wants to do with the dreams that He's placed in my heart? Would you be willing to ask God to let your dream live again? Would you be willing to ask Him to let your dream live again? If some of you are right here this morning, and you have stared for months at circumstances, and you are looking at your age and how old or how young you are, and you are looking at your ability, what you can do and what you cannot do, and you are looking at your available resources, and you are saying, well, I have too much or I don't have enough, and you're staring at all of these things, and you are certain that your dream is dead. You pulled into the parking lot to receive some hope this morning. You pulled into the parking lot to worship God this morning. But you are certain that the audacious dream you had weeks ago, months ago, years ago, last year, last month, whenever it was, you are certain that the dream is dead. And I'm here to dare you to believe for God to make it live again. Because God is the resurrection and the life. He is the Redeemer. He is the one who redeems all things. He can look at something that appears dead and He can say, get up and live again. He can look at something that is dead and He can say, live again. He can cause you to pray in a way you've never prayed before. To dare to ask for something that you've never asked for before. God can cause your dead dream to live for His purpose. You've been praying for healing, why did you stop? You've been praying for your business, why did you stop? You've been praying for someone to be saved, why did you stop? You've been praying for all of these miracles and then COVID-19 happens, why did you stop? God is the God who can do miracles even in the midst of uncertain circumstances. I'm not making this stuff up. It is in His Word. When I preach with such passion, it is because I know that God can do these things because He's done it before. A friend told me the other day, they said, God has done greater things than this. God has done greater things than this. Whatever you are praying for, God has done greater things than that. Why do we doubt Him? It is because we're staring at our circumstance and not staring at our Savior. I want to challenge you like I have for several weeks now. Pray again. If you need to fast and pray, fast and pray. You say, I don't know how to fast and pray. Call the church office. We'll get you in touch with some resources to help you out with that. Cry out to God. Dare to believe again. What if the greatest miracles of your lifetime are being set up right now in the midst of COVID-19, unrest in communities, and people parking in cars for church? What if the greatest miracles you've ever seen are in the very midst of these circumstances? 
What if we're almost there? What if we're so close? What if we do in fact look back on 2020 and say that was the most miraculous year I've ever seen? Because let me tell you, we don't need miracles when everything's working right. We don't need miracles when everything's perfect. We don't need miracles when you're not going through anything. We're fine by ourselves, right? And so now we're going through something and this is the space, this is the time, this is when God can move in great ways. It was during the storm that he saved the disciples on the sea. Right? Peter was in prison, wasn't he? And then the angel came and got him out and nobody could figure out where he went. Right? Paul was stoned almost to death. And then he gets up, walks back in the city and continues on with his missionary journey. How many times has the most dire circumstance turned into God's most miraculous display of power? And hear me, it will again this year. It will again. As I'm preaching right now, God is doing miracles. We just haven't seen the physical results. But I want to tell you, what is going on behind the scenes is more real than what you can see. We look at this world and we look at our physical bodies and we look at what we can see and we think that's it. But God is moving greater. The stuff behind the scenes is greater than the physical life that you live and see. It's greater. We just don't understand that concept because we live in this physical world. But God is moving. Just like with Daniel. From the moment Daniel started praying, God was moving. It took 21 days for Daniel to get his answer. But God was already moving. The miracles were already happening. The messengers from God were on the way. And the battle ensued for the victory. But like we sang earlier, there will be victory here. There will be victory here. I have taken here lately to, to making statements of faith every day. I have been saying things, believing for things. When I see an obstacle in front of me, I, I pray the verse from Mark chapter 11. Because the Bible says that if you will say, to, it says to have faith in God. It says if you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and do not doubt, but truly believe, it will be done. It will be done. And so I've been looking at obstacles and I've been looking at problems and I've been looking at stuff that looks bigger than me and things that look impossible. And I've been saying, I see you sinking beneath the waves of the sea. I see the mountain, but I see it sinking beneath the waves of the sea because my Bible says I can talk like that. My Bible says I can believe like that. My Bible says I can have boldness like that. I want you to dare to believe for your dream because I would say to you that if it's from God, it's not dead. And if it has died, He can make it live again because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So whatever dream you had from God all those years ago, maybe it was last month, maybe it was 50 years ago, you gave up on it, you thought there's no way, I believe God wants to breathe life into it this morning. So I'm going to pray for us and then I want us to worship with the band and then we'll go. And as the team has said, if you want prayer, you can linger in your vehicles after the service and we'll come to you. Just give your um, parking attendant a thumbs up. And that lets them know that you're staying for prayer. Let me pray for us, and then we're going to worship with the team, and then we'll be dismissed. God Almighty, we come before you. I call out to dead dreams this morning, and dreams that look dead, and I say live again in Jesus' name. I say live again in Jesus' name. God, I, I call out to the hearts that are broken. I call out to the hearts that have given up. I call out to the hearts that woke up hopeless this morning, and I say live again. I say have life again. Dare to believe once again. Have faith once again. God, in Jesus' name. The promise has been delayed, but it will be fulfilled. The promise may not have shown up visibly yet, but it's on its way. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would fill every car with faith. God, every person that came in hopeless will be filled with hope. Every person that came in depressed will be lifted up and encouraged right now in Jesus' name. God, that you would begin to move, that provision would be made, that, that needs would be met. God, that you would do what only you can do, that you would be mighty. This is the environment for miracles. This is the place. It's when we're in prison and locked up that you can get us out. It's when we have nothing that you can pour down your provision. It's when we are in a storm that you can calm the sea. God, those are the moments where when we cry out, you show up. And so in Jesus' name, I pray that people would dare to believe this morning. God, people driving by, people that are going to watch this later, I pray in Jesus' name 
that no matter where we are in the world, God, dreams would live again. Dreams would live again. As we worship you, as we pray, as we read your word, our dreams from you will live again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.